Namaste. Blessings to all of you. Namaste, Guruji. Namaste, Namaste. Namaste, Guruji. Yeah, yeah. Namaste. It is a gentle flowering. Very, very gentle. See, everything in this cosmos, especially birth, birth blooms. The conception in the womb takes place so beautifully, so gently. We need external gadgets to 
realize the fact that one is conceived isn't it yes simul simul still final the subtlest is the self the subtlest contains the grandest here this is the the grosser the grosser objects the grossest forms like infinite space right from infinite space in a particular location though it is called space it is minuscule only only a speck of space isn't it how love blossoms in one unnoticed unknowingly it enters one it resists all logic it fights with all logic no at that moment at that moment of entry how the human love affair for the animals it's a herd mentality in the human however he belongs to a certain tribe or group or race still he takes her woman his woman or his man exclusively individual one feels within them no isn't it with that love going on growing uncontainably one is not able to contain it one expects the other to reveal it immediately what happens in a woman it's shyness to come out in the open but it has blossomed it has it needs a verbal acknowledgement from the other meet a man or a woman right verbal acknowledgement here there is no superiority or inferiority complex at all that's why for love how do they call it they call it falling in love isn't it they call it as falling in love here also we have started about eight class ago this is the ninth section somehow we wanted the inner gaze to be slowly and slowly be established in one very gently has it happened has it has it started happening in both of you how did you go through this sometimes i think it's i am um, yeah. doing it sort of without yeah. putting much effort yeah. but when i'm trying to put a lot of effort in there i i it it becomes a battle for me within in myself mm-hmm. um i'm when i'm trying to do it more consciously it's um, it's it's sometimes i feel like i'm sort of controlling the th- thoughts um but then mm. i used to do that before so mm. now when i've stopped doing that i've just started to do it really gently and very casually um mm. it's getting a little bit easier for me like i said to you last week it's very challenging i started yeah. sort of letting go of that um mm-hmm. of those barriers and i just sort of uh, mm-hmm. just do it very very gently just not even feel like not even let myself know that i'm doing it i tried mm-hmm. it that way it's becoming a little bit easier for me yeah 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 don't don't even objectively make it as a process or a project or something yeah purnima is attempting trying mm. it should become so 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 innate like how you grab your child how you how you look at him you don't even feel yeah. that you are looking at him correct yeah you 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 don't feel you are you as a person or a physical body or a separate mm. mother of them doing mm. something to them. Isn't it? You are one and part and parcel of their physical body as well as their sensations. Yes. And do, do you find anything difficult there? Not at all. No. This is far more very near to you. This is you. In fact, yes. in fact, your motherhood over your children is far, far apart from them. You know that? Yes. <laughs> 
mountains apart yes with this example i uh, you I, i am sure that you definitely understand it right yes yes if you are you are love over your children or mountains apart though you are physically near though you are paying utmost care 100% devotion love and every care all your senses are on them all your powers of psychology is on them still they are mountains yes yes correct uh, why would that be good? yeah 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 this why question would... is uh, yeah yeah you may some uh, yeah you have to you also you have to ask this question uh, you ask me that question mm-hmm. yeah i wanted that yeah because yeah because we feel that like you know we are right next to them we are doing everything for them there is something to show that distance what is that yeah yeah it is not uh, simply i don't mean it uh, as a distance or something what i say say is this one no this uh, self the self of our deep sleep state it is what uh, the real uh, vaidhi is the real purnima mm-hmm. it cares purnima not separately from itself it loves purnima as not as being loved some someone it loves love itself is loving purnima love itself is loving me mm-hmm. that is really merge in all levels there is no psychology which is standing separately from it there is no thought patterns there is no feeling pattern there is no bodily existence at all to anything of the cosmos not only the persons and name you two people the whole of the cosmos only one self we always give this example of the mirror the reflections appear within the mirror is never objectively standing separate from the mirror's surface it is part and parcel of it the mirror allows whatever that is reflected within it to cover it cover its space the mirror's space the mirror's reflection too so what a kind of benevolence or grace with which it accommodates no? you better cover me i am loved itself this is a physical example that is always quoted by all the realist people adi shankara in fact he had uh, dakshinamurti sotram he starts the verse the first verse itself he starts like this vishvam darpana drishyamana nagari turiyam nijantar katha vishvam darpana means mirror right vishvam darpana nagari drishyamana nagari drishyamana how in the mirror the if if we are very grandest mirror which reflects a, a city nagari nagari means a city a grand city is reflected in a very big mirror vishvam darpana drishyamana nagari tulyam equal to the whole of the city is being reflected in a mirror not something away from it we are only talking about the reflection within the mirror we are not talking about even the city you remove the city in it okay that is a real object mm-hmm. see the the example the example the example is uh, limited only to the mirror and its reflection mirror is like the pure self the unconditional limitless pure love it reflects within its own or within its powers all that the reflection wants it to be reflected whatever the if the reflection wants a physical life 
it reflects it it wants a uh, 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 stagnant inert matter it reflects the matter it reflects the akasha the mirror whatever whatever without distance within the mirror if you see the distance between two objects cannot be distinguished isn't it it won't be distinguishable mm. right it will be immediate suppose you stand there suppose vaidegi is standing behind you 3 feet away and vaidegi sphere will overlap your shoulders immediately next to you the gap won't wouldn't be seen the distance between you and her whatever the real distance in real uh, real place and that real dimension won't be reflected there it's so very clear but but still it is very clear isn't it that's why that's why it's always said that reflections are actually our registrations not knowing the love of that not knowing not knowing the real nature of that deep sleep we have falsely taken our thoughts to be our physical body the thinker to be our physical body all the feelings that is happening be it motherhood or so many roles which we play right from the morning to the night don't we play thousands of roles yeah that's leave alone leave. Uh, uh, yeah tell me so you have question here um, yes, yes, why why is it like this why is it that we are so unaware of the real self because actually it doesn't do anything at all it is we have not doubted about our existence the doubtless way of carrying on life carrying on our lives in the form of right. thinking you don't doubt no no we you don't never, uh, yeah you never asked see you never asked about your identity at all with anyone in this world you taken for sure if suppose a new relative comes say you are growing up just like we want suppose yeah mm-hmm. suddenly some other your distant relative uh, she being uh, his aunt also in a different way she is visiting then we want to ask you uh, ma who is who is that auntie at it yes she is your auntie like that you will say you will have to give in that identity about herself without identity he cannot uh, he cannot uh, live he cannot relate see you will be going on conversing with her you will be talking with her you will be going restless isn't it so he will be nagging you who is she who is she who is she uh, aunt means what in what way is she your aunt or my aunt or mother's aunt or grandma so, so many questions will be popping up what are all these things see everything else is popping up but no one doubts about the i for whom all this pops up you never doubted no no yeah this doubtlessness is the cause of ignorance okay this is the origin yeah this is the origin of inquiry this is the origin place that's all uh-huh. but this sits this uh, this gets rolled down into inner probe inner inquiry slowly and slowly mm-hmm. and the self goes on helping you in various ways mm-hmm. to unfold and show it, reveal itself to you you ask no why am i unaware of this little fact yes not only you the whole of humanity has missed it. the only tiniest point what is that point the point of deep sleep state mm-hmm. no one exists but no one thoroughly gives an answer to it only the realist gives an answer yeah. he comes and gets to you mm-hmm. see that is that is that is your real 
not this form and a name for this form mm -hmm. in which so many thoughts move in you as your own your own uh, confusions because you are not you have not probed the real thing that has to be probed investigated right if you see if you have a chance to watch the movie karnan with your mother and vaidehi all of you together watch the tamil movie karnan in uh, whichever language you want with subtitles or subtitles the boiling is point the of the movie kuruji is old the old movie, movie. yeah old movie uh, shivaji ke nesan shivaji okay yes. the whole movie movie is resting on the identity crisis about himself right see he is such a man lad in all respects he is the champion of everything mm. he is a kshatriya by only by physical uh, structure as well as the fighting capabilities as a warrior like uh, fighting skills mm. in sword as well as archery in all the things wrestling and everything as well as about the sharpest brain of intellectual probe and everything mm -hmm. but everything has gone dumb when mm -hmm. the question of who my mother was why was mm -hmm. i thrown or did why did she throw me what mistake did i do or what mistake did she do mm -hmm. that was the fountain head of his existence in front of it is all aspects of living no day to day life mm -hmm. they are going they are going in vain without settling himself to who to whom was i born mm -hmm. who was my mother by appearance by fighting spirit by conquering everything whatever a man can learn immediately i am able to absorb and grasp everything of it but when it comes to identity about to whom was i born i was brought up by a uh, ratha sarathi okay who who who, who chariyati okay his father was a chariyati he was grooming the horses in stable okay mm -hmm. so he was working as a in the kingdom uh, in the for the king in his stable of maintaining horses grooming them breeding them making them race horses all this so was he the man my father no it cannot be whereas what was his real uh, who was his real father surya himself was his real father mm. surya with surya amsa she begot him kunti devi mm. out of mm. out of a moon that was awarded to her when she when she was a spinster mm. and that time she did all the seva service to durvasa madrishi there he bound he simply gave the bound to her see you wish any angel any deva he samsa will come to you as your son that's all <coughs> she tested mm -hmm. before marriage <coughs> surya mm -hmm. immediately she got the kid in hand glowing like a sun with coming together around in this body was the kavacha kundala that has a previous story again who was he before that but that gave him these traits okay these powers also mm. all these things everything is linked to cause and effect we are not born here we are see we are born through only we are not born here to some part we are born through <coughs> and 
our children are also born through us born through us they because there are some accounts because of karma karmic that's why mm. one becomes a mother one becomes a father one becomes an uncle one becomes the wife one becomes the husband in in any manner is get shuffled mm. because we we intimately twine through our psychology identifying ourselves to be the body the thoughts identify themselves to be the body and twine themselves as karmic uh, continuity action continuity as if bound indebted only uh, only a realist guru know, knows this fact he comes and says have that mental maturity develop that mental maturity by looking you can it's a gentle look then self start starts revealing everything the truth about the whole cosmos including through you how the actions manifest how you will have to handle the external life right from morning to night because it's being handled by thinking and the realize doesn't stop there what they say is you get behind this thing and look at him as to his origin for this you need to develop a gentle gaze this gaze alone will blossom as the supreme self within you because there are no two gazes within you as we had seen already the physical body has in the face two eyes even if there are two eyes the the sight which is seen is only one out of those two eyes isn't it eyes are two but the sight or the scene which is seen is only one the left eye doesn't see one thing and the right eye doesn't see another thing because it is controlled by single thought thought wants to see using the eyes and thought also actually is not the main thing the intellect is embedded with this past registrations and the, this past registration swing into action each moment of our waking state life so when it becomes a unstoppable mechanical continuity of everything unfolding through the intellect then we start questioning who for whom this intellect is working all the time throughout waking state mm-hmm. for who it wants to assume the doership the ownership or the the, the 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 real player of the role see if you are a mother the motherhood comes now in the intellect it stations itself yes. in the intellect not in the body body is only a utilitarian object is being utilized if you want to go to some place you use car or scooty or some other vehicle some or one or the other modes of transport in the same way here for this birth we are all undergoing all the pleasures and pains papa punya right wrong good bad all aspects of dualities through the working of this body and body is actually not working behind that is the dualities of past three stations that come into play that makes one the doer and the doer wants to do certain thing and get certain benefit and avoid certain difficulties and avoid sorrow so this pick and choose does it exist like that no where it is revealed deep sleep reveals that because there is choiceless not even one single entity is living in that body as that person or the name or the any of his want or will or 
to do something to be something to attain something to reject something nothing seems to exist during the dipsy so who then who are who what was that aspect which still existed with not allowing the body to have consciousness of its own isn't it we don't have our this present moment consciousness of i am so and so in the deep sleep this body is detached from the thinker feeler experiencer and they also don't seem to be available there nothing is there but still something existed what is that something that is pure love this has to be revealed by a guru for a seeker right here though you have not come directly you were placed in such a situation that already you were mother and father and you were grandma everyone have already were on that okay yes. so you took birth there where already they were on the job on behalf of you so you know not go through all those uh thing they underwent here it is sub to you in plate yes that's how this is happening to you no no right now that's true <laughs> is it it <laughs> the highest yes. the highest is happening to both of you through you were through prema ma prema ma as a nest and the shakti and your grandma all all the three of them so for for lives you have been with them that's why they brought you here yes yes through the search and toil to get the highest they wanted the highest they patiently waited they did all the good that should be done by a human being having taken part so out of the chitta shuddhi cleansing cleansing they did for their subtle bodies okay the the mind intellect and even for ego they earned they were so thirsty they were craving for this night and day so that was their lives so that so this is how somehow but you will have to come here to look at who was anavar mm. you have to doubt about this one whether this can be aware what is it doing now that is what is being taught right now here okay we have been seeing it from the past a class now we will go to the ninth one shall we yes yeah this is the ninth self inquiry technique science of self inquiry inner gaze in the seventh technique we saw this one truly which has our life makes our day to day living and what is that like truly true life happens through what what do you think now what do you think something as a life which is true that means there must be a life which is not true which is unreal what do we think which must be real and which must be unreal the deep sleep state is real and our day to day life is unreal why do you say why do you say our day to day life is unreal because guruji whatever is the Uh, everything that that we experience everything um everything that we see it's it's all a thought but that thought itself is not real when we um, from what i've learned previously from your previous um, uh, lectures yes. um, what i've learned is that uh, the real self is is formless 
it doesn't have um it doesn't have um any um any emotions it doesn't have any um any structure to that thought so everything that happens that that i see everything everything that's happening is not is not real it's it's unrealistic and you that's why you said date yeah you have come to the grasp of the things you have come to the grasp of the things okay nice now we will go we will continue mm. right from the cosmos to the tiniest cell whether we are asleep or whether we are awake that is existing as our physical body or psychological thought they are unreal because without all these things we existed without all these five koshas something remained during our deep sleep so deep sleep shows that without all these thing i already exist then in deep sleep also there is another the 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 primordial question do you have the feel that you were born during deep sleep to have taken birth in this physical body you should have the mind to identify with it with your physical body i am so and so isn't it now for your kids if you look at them watch them very closely you will understand their identifications have not grown at all isn't it yes where is in you the grown ups in grown ups what happen it has taken roots it has given it has started giving the effects of their thinking in the form of i got it i was expecting this i got it no i have, i didn't get it i lost it all the dualities of aspects they have already uh, are running their lives running in their lives so for each and every moment of waking state the deeply rooted all vasanas one can easily see this is what you just said now i already have got the feel that this is absolutely unreal the thoughts are structurally non existent fundamentally yes. though it is happening in me though superficially i can label i am the thinker but i don't find my body is the thinker i don't find uh, i this body even if i had mistakenly identified with my body i don't feel that i am that person who feels that uh, emotion because it it will fall off for the gaze alone that gaze only we have started planting the inner gaze the gentlest gaze it has to take roots by and by by and by with your sitting with your you will have to help yourself you will have to and it should never be stopped because this is the only guru the guru of the yin the guru of the deep sleep state i am pinpointing week after week but whereas you have to take root moment after moment it should grow in you like a boulder it should fill all your psychological structure the trust how will it grow through trust it's not belief mm. we want when he was a just born kid of 3 months 6 months he didn't have anything already but mother was there in the form of purnima the god himself was there isn't it <laughs> the god himself was there in the form of purnima how many kids mm. you have aidi ji Uh, one daughter uh, guru ji manya mm. uh, how old is she she She's came 14 14 14 okay yeah yeah she came yeah. manya yes yeah. yeah 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, I do remember. Yeah. See, when, when, uh, how, how the God appears? God appears only for the absolute trust. That the trust happens also by love only, because God is love fundamentally. Okay. Now we will go to the in eighth. What did we see? We just see. This was our eighth session. Okay, you can read this. Our deep sleep state is nothing other than absolute, unconditional, pure love. Just being within half hour, twice a day in the morning and before bedtime, takes one to that source love, and it gives immense. To the ego, I influence of the daily chores, and to attain all prosperities in material life also. Yeah, see, this is this is what is called as the balancing act. On one hand, you are always anchored in the formless within, because you don't want to. It's not that you don't want to. You have known what is your thought, don't you? Haven't you known? Why did he hold you? She just said yes, his thoughts are unreal. Absolutely, she said categorically. How do you find thoughts? Do you find the thoughts real or unreal? How do you find it? Thoughts, um, hmm. because thoughts are arising. Like you know, um, hmm. there is there is no mind. So then, that means like you know, these thoughts are also. Hmm. Um, unreal. Unreal. Yeah, yeah. Something extraneous, or uh, extraneous, unidentified with you. It doesn't. It, it doesn't lure you to get attached. However, uh, howsoever it is uh, pleasurable or painful, no more. It loses the capacity. These sittings make the peripheral to stay peripheral. Mm -hmm. In the very first session, how did we answer for uh, Vivan? Why, did, why have you taken the unwanted stranger to be your own the anger? Said no, the same. We all thoughts are the same. It is an uninvited things we have not sought for. Then who are we? That is what we said. Pure love, absolute, unconditional, pure love. Is our real nature that is the real life that that is throbbing without even this body. That is what is shown through our deep sleep state. The complete spirituality is resting on the deep sleep state. It's only an example. Through that example, we are we are grasping the whole truth of it. You get this, okay? We are settling to the whole truth of it. We, we are in a very, very convincing and in a way of absolute confirmation surrender. We only rest there. We only work there, function there, even functioning. Let it order. Let me carry on my day-to-day -day course. Okay. This is how we had seen in the last week. Now we'll go to the this week, today, the ninth session. Yeah, you please read this. Uh, I read, Guruji. Yeah. Uh, when a thoughtful state is mm -hmm. just looked at, directly, the thinker process of thinking thoughts vanish, and in that place, silence itself as pure love fills one. Love is, uh, love is noble Perfect. silence. Uh, no, no, no. Noble, noble, noble. The L is missing. Eh? Love is no yeah. side. Okay, yell. Love. Love is the noble side. Love is a silence. Love is bliss. Love is sharpness of sharpness. 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 sharpness of intellect and excellent. So I can't see the rest. So. Yeah. Love is sharpness of intellect. All excel excellences of waking state, of the waking state. See, love is 
లవ్ ఫీల్స్ వన్స్ హౌ హౌ హ్యావ్ ఈ స్టార్టెడ్ వెన్ ఏ థాట్ ఫుల్ స్టేట్ ఈస్ జస్ట్ లుక్ దట్ బ్యార్లీ వాట్ డిడ్ ఐ మీన్ అబౌట్ బ్యార్లీ ఐ జస్ట్ మెంట్ వెరీ వెరీ క్యాష్ నాట్ సో సీరియస్ ఫర్ దిస్ యూ నీడ్ నాట్ స్టాప్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ద activity that is going on for your day to day life in your day to day lives so when it is looked at badly all the more when you sit and do you just look at even at those moments sitting separate sittings are made in the morning as well as in the night that also should be done very very casually joyfully when a thoughtful state is just looked at badly the thinker the process of thinking thoughts vanish and in that place silence itself as pure love dawns in one or fills in one you are going to do it right now when you start doing it immediately that bit that place becomes silent you don't say immediately that why did he started doing this or even thinking about it you are not going to think about it as a place physical place in the physical body or in the head or in the mind or something no name no form for that name or no form and no name for that form nothing of those sorts simply barely you can start anywhere that's 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 what is my intention of saying communicating this is so love feels one that place immediately love is noble silence the highest to supreme sense love is bliss divine love is sharpness of intellect all excellences of the waking state because the sharpness of intellect the sharpness of intellect alone we can we can meet whatever we can get whatever we want to get even during our waking state whatever success even that success is to be seen clearly yes this is a success that is born out of love not out of violence not out of ill treatment meted out to meted out to others or they are meting out to on us not all this sort of stuff it is purely ahimsa pure love so whatever that is found within us as silence bliss divine and the sharpness the highest sharpness one gets just by sleeping yeah, enjoying a good sleep is it we become so rejuvenated psychologically also physically full excellence one gets vibrancy in the body isn't it when this this converts itself through the upadesham and you deploy this inner gaze barely immediately everything vanishes so when when everything vanishes you get all this prosperities that this intellect which has to perform here shine here there and then in full because it it, it is not structured on a separate center as the thinker is your body as the feeler is your body body or the seeker of some material welfare is also your body because everything everything is founded on the supreme love out of that energy that is enveloping yourself through that energy will you do it for some moments now i will ask you to open thanks yes yes Just very very casually barely look at whatever that happens with you even if it is blankness even if it is darkness within your head in front of your inner eye the mind eye or even in this eye whatever that happens to you you look at that immediately everything vanishes in you it is pure noble silence that love the silence itself is absolute love and that is all powers of your waking state okay you you do it i will ask you to open your eyes then you can open it. don't open your eyes hurriedly take a while 
very slowly and gently warm up your face with your palms keep your palms on both of your eyes slowly and gently open the eyes within the within your palms and then let them come to the external light what has to grow in you is out of sheer investing time consciously conscious on the inner gaze never letting go of that inner gaze within you just casually very casually you are not going to do anything with that gaze you are not going to acquire get attain certain states or anything it's the simple thing love is the simplest thing that's why it's called god is love love is god nothing else is god our love is not godly in itself because it is oriented towards so many attachments safety security when 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 a human being say that he loves it's if only she is like this if only he is like this all these things come follow isn't it if only if only he trusts me if only he respects me if only he gives equal status to me if only if only can there be love if only statements start emerging in one it cannot no that's not true love at all yeah on the contrary what happens it sacrifices everything whatever it has isn't it what is true love true love knows no barriers no no limits of sacrifice time there's no conditions of true love no conditions at all no conditional unconditional supreme state of unconditionality even you need not to be you need not be born to enjoy the pleasure of the supreme self during this deep, deep sleep state that is how it is showing affection and love the deep sleep state mm-hmm. that means easily what it says whether you are a yogi or you are a patient with mm-hmm. so much of pain in your body you are about to die in the next waking state next tomorrow even then it gives rest to the body isn't it yes so that kind of unconditionality is the substrate of love that must be the essential nature of god god must be the easiest person or thing or state or whatever you call it the easiest the simplest that must be love only love cannot have a cause that's why you cannot add any word at all why why i am loving you is because no 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 nothing you are going wrong absolutely no love at all even parents uh, used to ask their kids no whether you like daddy or mummy all this, this this play will be eternally this has been going on no how much you like daddy and how much you like mummy comparison comparison statements are all thrills thrill thrill factors for individualities but it is not true everything is wiped out in this state mm. such is the purest state that happens only because of love and that love the state of love or the state of supreme self dissolving in that only we can balance the external material life of a waking state and thereby richly growing beyond birth and death here also even while alive even while alive and you are able to transcend birth and death through this deep anchoring within that self that's emancipation that is enlightenment that is everything material well being is also only that okay shall we meet next week you have any question yes guruji
Thanks. Yeah. Fine, fine. All my blessings. Thank you, Gurushi. Thank Thanks, you for your time. Sanjay.